Waking to find a gaunt face staring in her window night after night, is it random chance, a prank, or something more sinister? When bullets and miles can't deter this entity, she realizes it's chosen her as its eternal victim until she's driven mad. Will she uncover why it attached to her before it's too late? Hit like and subscribe for this intense tale. It started a few nights after we moved into the new house. I awoke around 3 a.m. and glanced over at the bedroom window out of habit. Moonlight cast a pale glow through the sheer curtains. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I noticed the faint silhouette of a face peering in from outside. I froze, pulse quickening. Was I imagining things? But no, the face remained, shadowy features just discernible in the dim light. A sharp nose, sunken eyes, and a mouth that seemed unnaturally wide and gaping. Fear clenched my chest. This had to be some peeping Tom or Prowler. I considered waking my husband, but decided against it. Whoever it was probably wanted to get a rise out of us. Better not to give them the satisfaction, I thought. Taking a deep breath, I got up calmly and lowered the blinds all the way before returning to bed. Just some bored local kids trying to mess with the new folks in town, I told myself. Nothing to worry about. But over the next week, the face returned each night. Always in those early morning hours when the world slept. I'd stir from a half-doze and glance instinctively at the window. And each time, that gaunt face would be staring back at me from the darkness. Expressionless. Motionless. Its appearances were too consistent to be pranksters, I realized. Why would anyone go to the trouble of sneaking to our window at the exact same time every night? No, something more sinister had to be going on here. My husband was skeptical when I finally told him. Probably just seeing things, Han, tricks of the moonlight and shadows, he said dismissively. But I knew what I saw. To humor me, he agreed to stay up one night and keep watch. Around 3 a.m., I startled awake once again to see that hateful face leering in beyond the curtains. Heart in my throat, I shook my husband awake and pointed wordlessly at the window. But by the time he looked, it had vanished. Nothing there, he said before rolling over to go back to sleep. I sat staring out into the darkness until sunrise, but the face did not return that night. Still, I knew what I had witnessed. This was no illusion. I decided to change bedrooms to escape its nightly scrutiny. But on the very first night in our new room, I awoke to see that pale visage gazing in the window once more. It had followed me, seeming to peer right into my soul with its sunken eyes. Now I kept the blinds tightly closed and curtains drawn each night. But somehow, I could still detect that sinister face lurking right outside the thin barrier that protected me. I could feel its presence, could almost see the fabric depressing slightly under its weight as it leaned against the glass to look in on me. Soon I hardly slept, just lay awake watching the curtains for any sign of movement. I stopped going outside after dark for fear I might come face to face with my tormentor. I knew my behavior was growing paranoid and erratic, but I couldn't help it. I felt like those hollow eyes were watching me even in daylight from some unseen vantage point. My husband's concern grew as the face continued its nightly vigil. Dark circles hung under my eyes while I jumped at every little sound. 
He suggested I talk to a psychiatrist, thinking it was just sleep deprivation or paranoia causing me to imagine things. But I knew what I saw. One night, my husband witnessed it for himself. Awakened by the sound of shattering glass, he jumped up to see the curtains billowing over our broken bedroom window. The security alarm wailed into the night. Peering out into the darkness, my husband saw the face lurking by a nearby tree. He grabbed his gun and fired off two shots, but the shadowy figure barely flinched before disappearing into the night. After that, my husband took my fears seriously. We set up night vision cameras and extra locks around the house. But each night, that face still managed to appear at the windows exactly at 3 a.m. Now we could watch its blurry black and white image on camera as it skulked around outside leering in. We decided our only option was to move, get far away from this house and the malevolent entity haunting us. As we packed, I noticed a draft blowing from the hall closet. Pushing aside the coats, I gasped in horror at what I found. A jagged hole hacked crudely into the wall that opened right onto the bedroom window on the other side. Planks were nailed across it crudely like steps, allowing something or someone to climb up inside the walls and look through a slit cut into the drywall. Hands shaking, I grabbed a flashlight and tentatively shone it into the cramped space between the walls. Cobwebs stirred in the faint breeze. But there was no sign of whoever had created this hidden passage into our home. The police found no prints or evidence aside from the makeshift steps. We moved the very next week. I had never felt such intense relief as when we drove away from that house for the last time. But that first night in our new home, I awoke at 3 a.m. from a dead sleep. Heart pounding, I glanced cautiously up at the window by instinct. Moonlight cast a dim glow through the bare glass. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw the all-too-familiar silhouette peering in from outside. Sharp nose, hollow eyes, gaping rictus grin spreading wider as our eyes met. I screamed until my husband jolted awake in alarm. But by the time he looked, the face had disappeared into the night. Still, I knew what I saw. It seems no matter where I go, the face at my window always follows. We hired security experts to make the new house as safe as possible, installing an electrified perimeter fence, security cameras, and blackout curtains over every window. But none of it stopped that face from appearing exactly at 3 a.m. each night. Now we watched on camera as it materialized from thin air right outside the windows, floating there leering in before vanishing again like a ghost. Bullets and fences couldn't stop it, this entity passed through solid walls and glass as if they weren't there. We turned to psychics and mediums, desperate for answers. They confirmed our worst fears, this was no ordinary prowler, but a sinister supernatural force attached specifically to me. It fed off my fear, drew power from my rising dread each time I looked into its empty eyes. They tried blessings, cleansings, anything to repel it. But always, exactly at 3 a.m., that wretched face would reappear no matter where we were. Even if I squeezed my eyes shut and hid under blankets, I could still feel it out there, feel its hollow gaze watching me through lidded eyes. Unable to take it anymore, we moved across the country putting thousands of miles between us and the entity. But of course, the first night in our new remote cabin, I jolted awake and looked over at 3 a.m. on instinct. Just outside the window, floating in the black forest night, the face. It gave me a slow, mocking wink before vanishing again. I sank to my knees in despair, realizing there was no escaping it. 
Ever since that first night it appeared, the face had marked me as its prey. It would follow me to the ends of the earth if needed, appearing night after night until it finally drove me mad. I don't know why it chose me, what drew this phantom to my window to begin its relentless torment. I only know that it will never leave me in peace as long as I live. Wherever I go, no matter the protections in place, I know every night it is out there, lurking in the darkness, waiting for 3 a.m. when it will appear again to continue its grim visage. The face at my window has made me its prisoner, and it will never let me go.